everybody. Welcome back to this. I'm your host, Shauna Griffiths. And today we have a next gen leader. And I actually can't even believe that I'm calling him next gen because he is so far beyond his years in business acumen, savviness, all of the things and his experience. Can't wait for him to tell us about all of his uh, journey, his evolution. So without further chatter from me, Deontay Holden, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you so much, Shauna. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And folks, I have to say, if I call him Holden, I I grew up on Holden, this the Holden Drive. And so I asked him one day, I was like, anybody ever call you Holden? So that's not me making a mistake. That's just me always giving people different names. So, um, so folks, I'll also pause. I always try to do this is to give you context as to how I met our guest. Um, so we had a, another next gen guest who came on, Keontae Frazier, and he and I just hit it off from the get go. And afterward, he sends me a note and he's like, you got to meet my friend Deontay Holden. You're going to love him. And let me tell you what, folks, that is not a lie. I just adore Deontay, everything he's doing. Um, and so I'm just so excited to bring you on here, Deontay, to shine some light on you, to elevate your voice. Um, so folks, Deontay is a entrepreneur. He's had a few businesses, uh, currently is founder of Law of Athlete. Um, he also has played football, played football in the pros, had previous, uh, you know, a previous uh, business that he owned while in school, uh, while in college. So um, it's just so amazing, all the stuff you've done. So, so Deontay, talk to us a bit about, give the audience like a, just ground us in, what is Law of Athlete and what are you doing now at this stage of your life? So Law Athlete is a media network. It's a media network that uh, features original series, podcasts, um, the whole nine. And our whole mission is to maximize human potential. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, well, not necessarily growing up, but um, in college, I found myself really passionate about, you know, not only just helping people find their purpose, but um, just helping people maximize on whatever gifts that they possibly have. Because I, I understood that, you know, the game that you play won't last forever, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't really necessarily creating a company that was like focusing so much on life after sports. It was just more so just kind of focusing on life and like what things could we do to help you maximize your potential throughout your whole entire journey um, through entertainment, empowerment, and then also education. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so where did the name come from? You told me this, but I would love for you to share with the audience. Where did the name Law of Athlete come from? Okay, so you know what? I'm going to just keep it real with you. So um, after I was coming back, um, I used to train at a, a place called House of Athlete, um, owned by Brandon Marshall, uh, six-time pro bowler, the whole nine. And um uh, that was during the pandemic year. So I was in a situation where I didn't have a pro day. I couldn't train to fight the scouts. So I really couldn't show them the things that I was capable of. And uh, throughout my college career, I was actually writing a book on like my life, on like the things that I've done and how I got to where I was. Um, because a lot of people ask like, like, how did you do all the things that you did in college? So I told myself, I said, I'm gonna write a book about this. And then um, I ended up not writing the book. <laughs> um, I ended up doing something bigger. Um, yeah. So my mom was like, yeah, no, nah, you got to create a business. So I was like, I really don't know what it looks like. I really don't know what I would do. The names that I came up with before Law Athlete was not Law Athlete. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> and um, one day I was on Instagram. A friend of mine said, you know, when you come up with this name, it has to be something that people can resonate with. It's like a uh, something that lasts forever, even mm -hmm. until the day you die. So I was on Instagram. I promise you not, like 15 minutes later, it was a post that I saw um, from a friend of mine who was a creative director at NC State University for at the time. And they created this graphic and it said Law of the Jungle with like a, a NC State football player. And something dawned on me to say law, law of athlete. And I was like, wow, that kind of a nice little ring to it. Mm -hmm. 
And at first, I can't lie, I was a little hesitant about having the name because I was just at a facility called House of Athletes, right? So I was like, I don't want them to think that, you know, I kind of like took the name based off that and like spent it. But um, I said, you know what, what the heck, let's go with it. And I looked to see if it was available everywhere. Yeah. It was available everywhere, which is a very unicorn situation yeah. when you're creating a business, right? Like coming up with a name that's available on every platform, trademarks, the whole nine. So I did it. I ran with it. And um, here we are today. And the what's crazy enough is at NC State, we utilized the Law of the Jungle, which is a poem by Rudy R. Kipling. And we utilized that whole, like the wolf pack thing as for our alma mater right because like nc state wolf pack so it really meant a lot to me because not only did this name come from um uh, essentially like my alma mater yeah. you know it was a product of my story yeah that's awesome so so you have i was talking earlier to you about your merchandise which i love <laughs> uh -huh. and one of your t-shirts actually um gives some words to describe what law of athlete means so for the audience tell us what law of athlete means to you like what is that what is the essence of that mean so it's really it's it, honestly it's principles used by athletes i honestly consider everyone an athlete um, principles used to maximize their potential to excel beyond athletics, right? Um, and I truly believe, we at Law Athlete truly believe that if you maximize your potential, it will lead you to success. Now, the biggest thing is, okay, well, what is success? Success is whatever you deem success is. You know, success is not always, you know, being extremely rich, right? Sometimes success for you can be being able to, you know, take your family to different places or be able to, you know, walk outside, you know, on the park with your kids and things like that. Um, it, does, it doesn't always have to equate to money. So, but we want you to be able to maximize your potentials, maximize your opportunities, maximize your talents in order to reach um, that. Because every person that you probably ever met that has done that has been successful in some type of way, mm -hmm. right? So by law, we believe that if you maximize your potential, you will be successful, whatever success is to you. Nice, nice. I love that. So you have quite, uh, you've had quite a journey yourself of, I would say, an evolution of successes over time. And we talk so much about, you're, you're clearly focused on making an impact in this world, in this time that you have on this planet, um, which I just honor. And, and I think it's so important, as we were saying earlier, um, and so, and, and evol in evolving is so important. You're not the same Deontay that's, you know, started at NC State, at, you know, in the beginning of your career. You're not the same who graduated, right? And you had a business previously. So, so talk to us about a little bit of that journey of your evolution, the personal side, the professional side, whatever you want to share um, with our audience, with me, um, to just hear it from you. And, you know, again, because you're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, like I said, law athlete is a product of my story, right? Um, I will say going into um, college football, there was the business of things that I had to learn mm. that I did not know. I thought I was doing it right, right? I thought I was, I thought I understood the game and everything like that, but it was a whole nother business that I didn't understand. And I had to you know, essentially learn how to play by those rules. Mm -hmm. But by the time I learned, it was kind of a little bit too late, right? Um, but I faced a lot of charging tribulations. I mean, to be honest, what is a real story without it, right? So uh, <laughs> going into college, um, I always had the goal to graduate early, right? I always That was always my goal to graduate in three years. I was actually specially admitted into NC State. I wasn't like the smartest. I didn't have like, the best SAT scores. Um, GPA was actually um, pretty average, to say the least. Um, but I always knew that was a goal of mine, right? I just wasn't a great test taker. I, I mm -hmm. honestly hate the test. Hate it all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm more, like more of a project person. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with that, um, I was too small to, to actually play my freshman year. Uh, my second year, I broke my foot. 
Um, I had a Liz Frank fracture, which is probably like one of the second worst injuries close to like an ACL that an athlete can have. Um, so I was, I couldn't play football for almost like a year and a half. Yeah, it was crazy. And um, recovered from that. Um, but even though I recovered, I still had to understand the business side of things, right? Which I didn't. And which, because of that, I didn't play, honestly, for the the next two years of my college football career. You know, so it was a lot of things, whether it was relationships with my coach or whatever the case is. Um, I didn't understand the game within the game. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, that's that's what happened. And I didn't really get a chance to play, honestly, until my fifth year of football, like my fifth year. So I spent four years at NC State not playing for real. Oh, wow. Four years. Um, and, you know, a lot of people always ask me, oh, like, why didn't you leave? And it's like, to be honest, it was something that was telling me I needed to stay. Mm. Right. And to be honest, like the things that I had going on um, outside of sports was actually fairly well. So I always had faith that something would turn around with football. And my fifth year, I actually got that opportunity and it did turn around in a sense, you know. So, uh, you know, I started to get different like looks and people had questions about who I was and what I was doing because, I just came out of nowhere and I was playing well. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> All right, but I, I was there the whole time. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I faced a lot of different trials and tribulations. And, you know, looking back on it, I, I don't regret it whatsoever. Honestly, I do not regret it. And I love being at NC State. Um, I love the fact that I am an alumni there because um, I can always go back and, you know, teach people about the things that I've been through and the things that I went through. And um, for those who want to get to where I am today, if not better, I can also be able to, to help them do that. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. So, so I actually didn't, didn't know all of that. So thank you so much for sharing that with us and with me. Um, so during your college career though, you had also started a business. You had also mm -hmm gone abroad and studied. So, so talk about that. Like where in the time frame did that happen? Okay. Those so things happen, I guess it is. <laughs> <laughs> so actually when I broke my foot, um, is what allowed me to create my clothing business called Gavine. Um, I created that. It was like more of an outlet, you know, because being hurt, not being able to walk, you got to find other things that can make you happy. Other things that um serve you you know you know so i did that um and it was nice you know i really that was like my first phase of like owning the business and learning how how to do it and crazy enough i can actually tell you how i started it so um one day i lost my phone <laughs> i lost my phone and i was at the mall you know about to go purchase a new one and i already had this thought process of like creating that clothing brand right and when you go to the mall, it's usually like those, uh, those like middle, mm -hmm. I don't know, those like stores. Oh, like kiosk things, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the kiosks. And there was this young lady, she was there. Um, she was making graphic tees, right? And I asked her, I said, um, hey, like, what machines are you using to, to make this? Because, you know, I'm thinking about making my own clothing brand. She's like, honestly, I personally don't know. I just work here. But the owner is like down the hall in a whole nother store that he owns. So I go back there, I, I talk to him and he brings me in the back of his store and he shows me literally everything that I need to get, everything down to, you know, the, the heat presses, the, the company that I can go for screen print, the whole nine. So I went back home. I had a couple, a couple of dollars from school and I straight just went and invested, bought everything I needed to buy. And um, I hit the ground running. So like I was in the, in, <laughs> with, with a broken foot, I was in the living room making a hundred shirts, a <laughs> hundred shirts. I, love that. I honest, I probably should not have bought a hundred shirts. I probably should have started with like 25, <laughs> but I was pressing. I was just so excited and I was so confident um, I love that. In, in what I was doing. And then, but to fast forward, um, yeah, that was the whole reason why I really created the brand. Like okay. I, I had, I had a broke foot. I didn't really have much else. So why not? Yeah. Um, 
by studying abroad. Okay, so this is crazy. All right, so I guess I could tell it, right? I'm already out of school. <laughs> so, uh, so what happened was, I remember it was always my goal to graduate in three years. Yeah. And I knew if I graduated in three years, there was nothing anybody can do. I can transfer, I can leave, I can still keep my eligibility. That was my whole goal, right? Now, crazy enough, when I was in the pursuit of graduating early, I found a grad program, right? It was called the Global Luxury Management Program at NC State University. And I didn't really know much about it, but the word luxury kind of like really like, like enticed me to like check it out. So then I found out that, you know, they go to Paris, they go to New York, they go to all these different places. So I was like, oh, I got to go. I got to go. I love it. <laughs> so um, I, I got waitlisted. I got waitlisted. And then they ended up bringing me in um, and giving me the opportunity to be a part of the program. And I knew, you know, I kind of knew that I was going to have to uh, go to Paris, but I just didn't know necessarily I didn't know how it would have af would affect my um my football eligibility because I had so much right so at the time when I got into the program uh my schedule came out my schedule for my schedule for my classes and my classes had interfered with football so I was in a situation where I had to either drop the program and continue to play football like it, there was no other option but thankfully enough, the grad, my, the grad program that I was in fought for me. They said, you know, we really want them to be in a program. It has to be something that you can do. And the whole idea was, okay, well, we're going to extend. Um, we're going to have to extend this program. Basically, he cannot go to Paris when he's supposed to. So I had to extend my, my program. Instead of making it one year, it had to be two years. Mm -hmm. So essentially... They said, okay, well, if we extend the program, you have to make sure that you are going to pay for his, his whole thing, the whole study abroad. So when they agreed, I said, okay, great. Because I broke my foot, I was able to get a six year. Oh. So once they agreed to me being able to go and study abroad, I then applied for my six year and got it approved. I always knew I was going to have a six year because I broke my foot and I was out for a whole year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so once that happened, I then applied to uh, get my six year, got it approved. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Paris and then come back and still play football. And a big test, one is I thank the NC State football team and Coach Doran for even allowing me to go. Right, because they even though that happened, they didn't they didn't have to like bring me back. They didn't have to like allow me to come back. But I I thank God that they trusted in me to be the person I was gonna be and do what I said I was gonna do. Mm -hmm. Because I came back and I was still the same person, right? Yeah. Like I didn't I didn't necessarily miss a beat. I I just missed a semester. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of of uh being with the team. So I'm thankful that they allowed me to do that and come back and, you know, it was all okay. But that's what happened. You know, I have to say, for, for those who are listening, the thing, a thread keeps coming through to me as you tell your story and all the, the these various things that you've done is like, you really, you chased down what you wanted to do. You had an idea of what you wanted to yeah. do. It sounds like it wasn't all squarely mapped out and exactly this and that but you you saw something and that drive in you to go get it and you know I think there's something that you know I've really learned in my own evolution is to is to do that to go forward to figure to be able to figure it out as you go along get on the right path and and go right every day you take a step forward take a step forward. you have to ask for what you want you have to speak up for yourself you have you know and like quite literally for you you had to ask to go abroad. You had to ask to do these things. But I think that so much of your story is about that, um, just that push, that drive that, you know, you put yourself there, you asked, you kept moving yeah. forward. When a lot of times those, all those challenges that you've talked about, they can really be hiccups. They can really, you know, a lot of times, it, you know, it can make us just stop in our tracks. 
And I just love your constant pursuit and how resilient you've been. And I just appreciate you sharing it for, you know, people who are listening to this of all stages of your career, of all stages of your life. I think that's a, a great thing to keep out in front of you. And I do think it's, there's that mindset of that athlete mindset in that. Right. Right. And I honestly, for me, it's like you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So <laughs> I'm going to just keep shooting, you know, I'm going to keep shooting. It's um, so true. And, yeah, and it's like I'm gonna do the work and kind of let the chips fall where they may, to be honest. Um, and that's just kind of how I look at how I look at life. You know, take advantage of my opportunities. And for me, to be honest, I don't necessarily wait for opportunities. I create them. There you go. Like I create, I'm I'm going to create it and you know, kind of pay attention to the signs that God has given me. And if this is the sign that said, hey, you need to take advantage of this wholeheartedly, I'm going to do so. Mm -hmm. um and just that's just a big testament to 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 god and everything but um I yeah no I, I don't wait for opportunities i create them that's awesome i love that i don't wait for opportunities i create them that is that's yeah. a good one so so and it's actually a good time because i was when i was rabbit holing about you <laughs> prior to this um one of the quotes that you said that that i pulled out that i wanted you to talk a bit more about is Something you said, I don't quit anything. So yeah. that's also, I think it's it's kind of it's an extension of what we just talked about, but talk to us about that a bit. So yeah, I mean, it's it's more so just like you know, like you said, just being resilient. Like um, I don't like I know what I want and I'm not gonna stop until I get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, it's just that simple. Yeah, it's funny. So when I played basketball at the University of Michigan, I played my first three years and I didn't play my last year and then I used my fifth year of eligibility to run cost country and get my graduate degree at Eastern Michigan University um but there was this thing where like in my mind I wasn't even though I technically quit I stopped playing at that you know at the University of Michigan in my mind it wasn't that I was quitting it was that I was taking a new path so, you know, and continuing to move forward, it was like this tangential move that may not have made sense to anybody else, but it made sense to me. And so I think it's an interesting thing. Some of that sometimes is like, well, what am I defining? Just like you said earlier, what are you defining as success? What are you defining as quitting? What are you defining as, I wasn't giving up. I was taking, you know, again, a tangential path. Right, right. And to be honest, like, you don't necessarily fail. You you fail when you stop trying, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're pivoting and you're trying something else, you didn't necessarily just fail or give up. You just pivoted and now you're trying with the new best thing that you have. Like for me with football, right? You know, there was enough signs for me to see like, okay, I need to pivot and go elsewhere, right? That's not, I didn't quit. I didn't quit on football as more so. I saw the signs. And I've been through enough to see, okay, this is something, this was the chapter that I had. It's time to move on to this chapter and go towards the things that, you know, God is calling for me to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and part of why I talk about this is because again, as so many people are listening to this episode and they're people of all different walks of their life. And I think sometimes when we whether it's we take a new role within a company or we decide yeah. that we're going to take a different job or we're just like, you know what, I am making a choice that that's enough. I need to stop this and figure something else out. I think there's just freedom and understanding like we don't we can meet ourselves with grace in that morning, in that, in that moment and, and find a new path without having to have that guilt of like, oh, I quit. And to your point, like you just to keep moving forward, to keep trying I think is so much where that sometimes it's like, what's motivating you to keep going? What's that fight? And sometimes just thinking of things I think can make, make a big difference. Right. And I, and I give you a really good, like um, a real like authentic example from at least from football. Right. Um, when I was playing in the CFL, I got released. Um, and when I first got released, it was like, uh, I, I was a great teammate. It was nothing I did wrong. Right. So I was actually content with being released because I gave it all that I had. Right. I, all, I gave it all. I didn't quit. I didn't half ass it. I gave it all that I had. So when I got released, it was like, okay, boom, cool. Then when I got the next opportunity, 
I asked myself, okay, well, why am I getting this opportunity, right? I spent a lot of money on Love Athlete. Uh, I can take this money from football and put it back into the business. I'll be okay. I'll be fine, right? I can do this for a season. And I was going to do different things while I was in camp. And I will always question myself, like, why am I really doing this? Am I really doing this for the money? Am I really doing this because, like, I truly love the game? And I actually, it was both, in a sense. It was both. Um, but when I got released again, right, I said, well, this time again, I gave her all that I had, right? So I am, I am content, like, and to be honest, I may have to just go ahead and find another route, like, because the signs is clear, to be honest, I should have, I should have left football alone, alone, a long time ago, (laughs) right? But I kept pushing. I kept pushing because I truly believe like this was for me, but I don't necessarily think that it was God's plan for me. Yeah. yeah. Right. But it, it was my plan though. Mm-hmm. Right. So um when it kept happening, each time that it happened, I got a little even more content because again, I gave it all my head. I didn't quit. I didn't have fast. I didn't quit. So when it happened, it was like, you know what? That's okay. There's other things that I have going on right now that really does serve a bigger purpose. So if I just focus on that again I would still be okay so um yeah and and so much you know we go back to law of athlete folks who are listening like this is mindset we're talking about here it is that that relentless pursuit it is that I'm going to go forward I'm going to figure it out I'm going to compete I'm going to get out there and compete every day and I when (laughs) I think sometimes people think I'm like oh you, you mean competing against other people you're like no like competing on the journey, competing to prove yourself to yourself every day. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think all that you talked about, all that you talked about just now was very much like through the lens of football. But I think anybody who's listening to this, there's so much, it's so relatable to work. I mean, I was at a place for far too long. I should have get, I should have walked away. I should have done something else, but I kept going back every day and fighting and fighting and giving my all. And I never quit. And I ended up getting the rug pulled out from under me during the pandemic pandemic but again it was like you know I just almost in a sense I didn't call I didn't make it uh pivot early enough you know I don't regret because of I look back at it and I'm like well all the things that I have done since then I've grown so much um but I think that there's still that just that mentality that that athlete mindset of go to work every day, work your ass off, you know, and like you will continue to go forward when you have that, that mindset. And, you know, it doesn't mean that you're going to have like an easy journey. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think it does take that just, I don't know that like fight, call it. (laughs) (laughs) I got a question for you. Do you believe, do you believe that um, people should have plan B's? Oh, that's a good question. Because, you know, like, and the reason why I ask that is because, you know, people, some people may say, well, if you believe, if you truly believe in your plan A and you, you know, put all your effort into plan A, it will work, you know? So how do you feel about people having plan Bs? And this is just not just athletes. No, I think it's a really good question. And part of the answer is, comes in the form of something that my coach and I talk about a lot. He reminds me often, Leslie Harris, I talk about him a lot on here. Hi, Leslie, if you're listening, um, is to do more of what serves you and less of what doesn't. And I think that there's a degree to which in work, like a lot of times you need to make sure that you're just not uh, getting used by the situation that you're using it too. So I think sometimes when you, if you just give all of your all to somebody else's business, And you have to really look at it. Is it looking at, is it, is it serving you to do that? And is it fueling your soul? Is it fueling your, you know, your, I was going to say your pocketbook, your bank account. Like there's different reasons to your point about playing. And I love your awareness about that. Um, You know, you have to ask yourself, why am I doing this? You know, and plan B doesn't necessarily, I, I think it's important to be doing the things that are fueling you. And sometimes if you give all of yourself to somebody else's dream, you have to pause and ask yourself it like, am I at risk here? Or is this actually giving back to me? And I think that there's a degree to which, 
you know, we should always be doing the things to continue to evolve and grow and put more tools in our toolbox. And I think those are the things that help us to be able to pivot to a plan B. And you might start thinking about these things. Um, Again, I think that the biggest sense of it is you're actually doing things to further your own growth. So you're becoming more valuable in life. Right. And sometimes you may have an idea of what that plan B is or not, but you're, by practicing those things, you're preparing yourself. You know, you're like, right. you know, that saying about like, be ready so you don't have to get ready. Yes, yes. So that's <laughs> or stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And I think that's one of the things that comes to mind as we're talking about this, because, you know, I didn't, there's been so many things in my journey that I didn't really know what it was going to be, but I was doing things to, again, like stay ready, put tools in my toolbox, and then I could pounce when plan B needed to materialize. Does that make sense? No, no, definitely, definitely. And I truly believe, honestly, for me, um, I think that, you know, people, athletes in particular should definitely um, have plan Bs, at least know right at least know what they want to shift into uh when it's time for them to transition yeah um, because honestly if it wasn't for me doing that you know my college transition would have been trash because i'd be like where am i supposed to go like what right. am i supposed to be doing you know yeah. um and some people may say you know well if you truly believe and you focused in and honed in on your plan that you might need a plan b that could be true but with the industry that you're in you can't play football you can't play basketball you cannot play soccer forever you can't or any other sport right 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 you can't do it forever so it was very important very important to understand that you have to have that plan b totally and i think again like in the working world that's so great to think about as an athlete again it's that that athlete mindset right that all of us will have that all of us can have you know and in the working world you're not always going to have the exact same role at the exact same company forever so what are you doing to ready yourself and i guess my only uh i was gonna say counter (laughs) is just that like you know I may not know what that plan B is exactly. It's like when someone asks me, what do you want to do next? Well, I don't know exactly what that is, but I can look at it and say like, oh, you know what? I know I need to round out my skills in these areas so that I'm better prepared for that next step. And and so I just say that because I think sometimes people are like, oh God, they got paralyzed. They don't know what plan B is. What is it? What is the end result of plan B look like? We can all get on that journey, whether we know what it is or not. Does that make sense? Right. For sure. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I don't have much time left with you here and I'm going to try to respect your time. Um, oh, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. So, so talk to me about, I went to your site, um, lawofathlete.com um, before, uh, I don't know, when I was preparing for this and you've got some people there and on the site in the video with you. And that looks like your crew are, so talk to us about who's involved in law of athlete. Um, so uh, Ty, you, so you're talking about Tykera Carter, um, Tykera Carter and um, Sid McFadden. They, Tykera was the first that um, came on to Law Athlete to, to be a host of the Law Athlete podcast. And um, she's been doing a phenomenal job. Uh, you know, she where, whether she was working at overtime, the WNBA, um, really has a huge understanding of like the digital market and um, building community and really telling stories. Um, and then also say he's just a, a completely great person down to earth. Um, so, and that was somebody that I actually grew up with since he was about nine years old or so. Um, so a lot of these people that um, that you see um, with us today were of law athletes, people that I've known for years, right? And my whole goal was to, you know, create an empire that I can essentially build with the people that, you know, I care about, you know, considering the things that they want to do with their life. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I saw Tykera and I said, well, you know, considering that her personal goals, you know, how can what we're doing over here help with her personal goals? And the same for, for um, Cedric. Um, then we also had a couple production teams, you know, we kind of swapped in and out of those, um, ran through our own trials and tribulations with that. I learned so much, you know, having a media company now with, with just production stuff um but it was uh i will definitely say 
without the people that came and without the people that left and the people that are still here today, without those people, we would not be where we are today. So big thanks to everybody who has been involved and who is involved with Law Athlete um, because it, it, it truly helped a lot. And I, I truly believe uh, that's why Law number one, picking the right team is so essential for a Law Athlete. You know, you have to pick the right team, you know, finding people that's truly passionate about what they do. Um, and I will definitely say that I found a couple of people that was passionate and um, you can see how that has played out so that's far. Awesome. So you, yeah. so you just made me think of this question because I didn't ask you this before. I didn't think about asking you this, but you said that rule number one. So are there other rules? So tell, yeah. tell us what those rules are of rules, the rules of law of athletes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, law number, uh, so, okay, let me, so I created the 12 laws of athlete, right? Um, and what I wanted to do with the 12 laws was more so provide like a framework for success, whatever success is to you, um, to help maximize your potential, right? And at the time I got the idea from this book, it was called the uh, 48 Laws of Power, right? By Robert Greene. And, I asked myself, like, why isn't there laws for, like, athletes, right? Like, there's so many different things that we need to abide by in order to, like, be not only the complete athlete, but just complete individual, right? So I um, was like, you know what? I'm going to create some laws. Now, granted, the laws wasn't 12. It was, like, 55 at the time. <laughs> focus, um, focus, I up, Deontay. Yeah, I did. I'm like, I had to focus, 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 focus. Come on, come on. Boom, boom, boom. So I ended up creating a 12. 12 for me was like the number of completion or whatever the case is. Um, and I started asking around, like, you know, I looked at my own story, everything that I learned, but then I also asked around to do like a case study in a sense or a survey to figure out what laws should I implement, what laws should I take out, whatever the case is. And um, and I came up with those 12. Um, and law number one was like definitely the most important thing, right? Picking the right team. So, you know, picking the right team that does not necessarily have to be picking the right school, right? Picking the right team can be picking the right job, right? The job that serves you, you know, externally and internally. Um, it can be picking the right friends. It could be picking the right uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever the case is, because all of these different people um, all of these different organizations or teams can be factors of your success or they can be factors of your failures. Mm. So, and let me not say failures, but factors of your lessons in a sense. So um, it's very essential for you to pick the right team, right? Whether it's personally from a business standpoint, whatever the case is. And then um, law number two, right? Is prioritize your mental and physical health. Um, and that's not just something that athletes should do. That's something that all people should do, right? Like, I think we're coming in the in the in the in the era right now where like people are really honing in on like their mental health and like understanding what that really is. Um, so what I wanted to do was create this law where people can bring in different perspectives on how you can prioritize your mental and physical health because there's no like one set way, right? There's so many different things that you can do. Right. And we're constantly learning every day. Uh, law number three is be a positive influence. Right. Um, you never want to be a cancer to the team or, you know, a cancer to your friends or whatever the case is. You want to be able to impact not only your community, but the world the best way you possibly can. So being a positive influence for at least for athletes is very essential. Right. Because athletes and entertainers are some of the biggest influ influential people in the world. So it's very, it's very important for us to be a positive influence. And I'm not necessarily saying you have to be a mentor for anybody, whatever the case is, but because so many people look up to us um, as influential people, like let's make sure that we're trying to guide people in the right direction, right? Um, for how we talked about utilizing the system, don't let the system use you. I did not understand the business within the business. And by the time I did, it was a kind of too late, but I still understood it enough that it was going to help me. Um, but that's for anything, right? Whether you're working at a corporation, 
right? How can I utilize the system that I'm in, utilizing the resources that this company has, um, taking the money that I'm getting from my paychecks and, and putting it into things that will serve me way beyond I can ever Absolutely. imagine. Absolutely. You feel me? Like, yeah. so different things like that, you know, just basically maximizing the current situation that you're in. Um, law number five is never let a setback keep you from coming back. So that's more so just focusing on like the trials and tribulations that you may face. For me, you know, breaking my foot was one of the pivotal, pivotal moments in my life. Um, and I had to not let that setback keep me from coming back to playing football or studying abroad or whatever the case is, like that was very important. Um, and it took a lot of perseverance, um, a lot of just keep on shooting, you know. <laughs> Go up every day, earn you know, that right to come up. back every day, yep. You know, cause, cause to be honest, to be honest in life, half the battle is just showing up. Yeah. In life, like half the battle is really just showing up. Just you know what, if I want to start that business, just start. Yeah. You know, um, I'm too tired to go to practice. I'm too tired to go to workouts, but I want to get stronger. Just show up. You know, half the battle is just showing up and then do the work and let the chips fall within that. Um, and some people, are, they don't have the confidence. Some people may be timid to, to show up. Um, number, law number six is be a student at a game. Um, and again, this is not something that athletes just need to do. It could be anybody, like whatever your craft is. If you want to be the best graphic designer, right? What can I be looking at? What resources can I be utilizing to be the best graphic designer? Who else can I look at? Who else can I watch? Who else can I at least try to learn from to be the best graphic designer, right? So your game is essentially whatever your interest is. Your game is whatever your your profession is whatever the case is um how can i be a student of that in order to be the best because to be honest in order for you to be the best you have to learn from the best so true i know that's why i have always talk about like stress being a curious leader you know i said you're a next gen leader part of why is because you're curious you're yeah, that constant seeking of knowledge that constant being a student of the game of life the game of the mm -hmm. journey so all right mm -hmm. so we got through six seven yeah seven. i'm taking so, notes folks i don't know if you're being like me but i'm taking <laughs> notes <laughs> so <laughs> law number seven you you already said it um and which is crazy about these laws is like people live this every day yes. right you're people already doing live it. this yes. you're already doing it so it's like you can try to like deflect i'm like oh no these don't work you're literally already doing it <laughs> or you you're know, not so. and then we have to ask ourselves why am i not you know because that for me so much i'm like if i'm not doing rule number six then i have to look at it and go actually i'm contributing to getting in my own way and i think that's where like holding yourself accountable well i'll just say for myself holding myself accountable in the journey i have to continue to ask myself why am i not doing this why am i resistant to that and i'm like oh shit I am in my own way. And then there's no, you know, again, it just comes down to like, that's not what I want. So, okay, right. seven, seven, seven. S seven, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. You already said that. <laughs> we said that, okay. Right, and now obviously it's just, it's pure, pure preparation, right? Yeah. It's pure preparation. You never know when your opportunities are gonna come. Um, so if it's something that you truly want in life, stay ready because you just never know when it's gonna happen. That's and it right. can't happen. That's right. You know? I, folks, um, I literally did not know this. We that these were these were the laws. So we just <laughs> happen to be <laughs> have some <laughs> same philosophies. Okay, eight. Your character can take you places your talent can. Oh, true. Um, you know, you, for example, right? You know, your character is it's just so it's just great, right? And um, you know, I just truly appreciate having a, a beautiful soul like you in my life. Um, and, it, and it had really nothing to do with, you know, how smart you are, whatever the case is. It was just more so you just being a great human being and you being a great human being can allow you to be in rooms that you just simply being tired as can. Right. I mean, let's let's give an example. Have you ever seen, you know, an athlete that was extremely great at what they do, but they were just a complete asshole? <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah i've seen that in people at work as well <laughs> right 
<laughs> right. You know, so it's like, yeah, I mean, we're going to use him or her for the things that she can do on the field or on the court or whatever the case is. But to be honest, outside of that, we wouldn't help them for anything. <laughs> right. So it's like yeah. your talent, your talent got you on the field. Your talent kept you there because of what you could provide for the team and help the team win. But to be honest, in life, your character may be trash. So it's going to be hard for people to want to even deal with you. Yes, you are so right. And one of the things I talk about a lot in business is that your reputation, which has to do with your character at the end of the day, that's all you have. So how are you going to show up every day? How are you going to display your character? Who are you? What actions are you going to be taking every day so that you're walking the talk? And I just, you know, I just believe it so strongly. You create, I mean, of course there's exceptions, right? Someone could have a misperception, something bad could happen, but to a large degree, I think that we are responsible for our character. We are responsible for the reputation that we develop for ourselves. Right. So, exactly. okay, exactly. nine. Number nine is um, find your purpose outside your sport. Um, and your sport, it doesn't necessarily have to just deal with athletes. Your sport can be anything. It could be your job. It can be your sport. Um, it's so necessary to find your purpose outside of that. And the only reason why I say that, because if it was if it was truly your purpose, you could do it forever, to yeah. be honest. You know, certain certain things you can't do forever, right? So find the thing that your purpose outside of that. Right, and I'll just lean in to say, I think sometimes it can be really stressful when you hear find your purpose and you're like, but I don't know what it is. And so I just say to folks, I think, that's a journey too. And I think one of the, um, again, when I was rabbit holing about you on the law of order LinkedIn page at the header, it says greatness takes time. Um, and so I just, I, I point to that. If you're someone who's listening and you're like, oh, I love that idea, but what the hell is my purpose? I don't really know. I just think if you can keep it as a North star to figure it out and then like, take the actions every day, a lot of what we're talking about, then I think you start to, it starts to show itself to you. It start you, right. you start to find it. Um, because sometimes I think people feel like forced into finding their purpose. And you, I, if it's genuine, if it's authentic, and this is all about being an authentic leader, then you, you, you gravitate toward it. You find it. It finds you to a large degree. Right, 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 right. Okay, 10. 10 is uh, financial future. So this is more of the financial literacy aspect, right? Building generational wealth, if that's your desire. But let's be real, we you need money to survive, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's um, so, so true. And I think athletes and people coming up, like I just think that there's not a lot, you're learning so much in high school in, in the books, right? Or like in school, in college, but so much isn't teaching you that financial literacy part. I mean, for years when I was in corporate America, I was like, I had no idea. They would say, oh, stuff to prepare for your 401k. And I was like, panic, like, I hate this. You know? And so I just do think, and I think especially for athletes, I'll point to that. I think that the system does a bit of a disservice by not right. making that. And, and I think it's gotten so much better. I was a part of the NBA family for a long time and I saw the player development programs there to help on that. But um, a good friend of mine, Natalie White, who is senior vice president at the LA Sparks, who's been on the show before, um, she even talks about like how important it is to this day to make sure that these athletes are getting help with financial literacy. And so again, I just say whether you're an athlete or it's, um, you know, in the working world, I think there's, I can't stress it enough. And it's something that I work on all the time as well. So, for right, sure, 11. For sure. 11 is, um, well, let me see. I gotta look, I gotta look. I know that's crazy, right? Leverage no. your time to achieve, leverage your time to achieve your goals. Right, so it's just basically time management, um, being goal oriented, uh, system oriented, whatever the case is, um, doing the things that's necessary to achieve which, whatever you wanna achieve. Right. And I bet going back to your LinkedIn header, <laughs> the greatness takes time. I think there's a part of patience also, because I think whether you're an athlete or you're someone in the working world, there's so much where 
And actually, so Matt Bailey, who's the founder of Gay Mod, who was one of my dearest friends and he worked um, on my team at one point, that was one of the biggest lessons I shared with him. Like if there's one thing that you can, that you should pay attention to, it's learning the art of patience. And I think, it, and I've always had that too, you know, and it's like, as much as we need those time management skills, it's also realizing that just because we want something happen to happen on our timeline, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the timeline that was meant for you on your journey, on your evolution. Mm -hmm. And whether mm -hmm. that's you believe in the universe or God or whatever the higher power, the power is, I, I, I just believe that. Facts, for sure, for sure. And that's so true. You hit it right on the nose. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 12. Yeah, it's simply just stay focused. Yeah. <laughs> Above all else, stay focused. And you know, the great thing about these laws that I can always like reevaluate them, create different volumes and stuff like that. But like these are the first original like 12 laws. So yeah. I'm super excited about that. Oh, yeah. I love it. And I love that you went through them, all of them, and allowed me to chime in. And um, so I usually ask, what are the key takeaways? But at the end of the show, I usually ask for key takeaways for the audience. But I'll tell you what, folks. <laughs> Those 12 laws and the way we talk about it are your takeaways. So rewind, play again, write yourself a list. I told you I've got my list. Um, we will add the list when we post this. Um, but I think for, for people who want to hear more from you, hear more about Law of Athlete, um, brands that want to get involved, because I know you work with some brands and people like, what, what are the avenues for people to get closer to you and your brand? Um, one, me personally, you can reach out to me through via Instagram or LinkedIn. Uh, Instagram is Hancho Holden. Uh, LinkedIn is my name, Deontay Holden. Um, but also for brands that would like to partner, it can be the same thing, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, but and also uh, the website. Uh, so we have a section on our homepage that says be a partner. Um, and we can be a part in a multitude of different ways, whether it's in film production, um, mental, mental pro program, mentorship programming, um, any type of collaborations that people want to do or any advertising strategies um, that people would like to be a part of. But um, yeah, so many different things that we can do. Nice, nice. Well, I love what you are doing. I love your focus on having a positive impact on the evolution of brands and people. That is what we are all about. Um, I you. am so honored to know you, to walk the journey with you and count me as one of your encouragers always. I appreciate you so, so much. And um, I just can't wait to see what life is like in the next couple of years with you being in it. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're amazing. Well, everybody have an amazing day. Take this, use it, share it, um, and bring good things to other people along the evolution. Thanks so much, everybody.